Good afternoon. As Deputy Dean of the Part-Time Program, it's my honor to welcome you to Chicago Booth's 2017 Executive MBA Program Graduation Ceremony. We are delighted that you can be here to celebrate the achievements of the men and women who are receiving their diplomas today. Over 21 months of hard work on our Chicago, London, and Hong Kong campuses have come before today's event. We're extremely proud of our graduates and look forward to their continued connection to the University of Chicago and the Booth School of Business. And now I would like to introduce the interim dean of Chicago Booth, Douglas Skinner. Please be seated. Good afternoon and welcome. Let me offer my heartfelt congratulations to our XP86, EXP22, and AXP16 graduates. Today we celebrate the accomplishments of our most recent graduates. But it is also a day to show appreciation, to reaffirm aspiration, and to reflect on the school and what makes it distinctive. The personal achievement of our students is predicated not only on their hard work, but also on the support of their classmates, family, friends, and colleagues. To all of you who are here today, and all those who could not be here, I thank you for the sacrifices you have made to support these students. I would like to add my thanks to the deputy deans, faculty and staff for teaching and supporting another successful group of Booth graduates. Finally, I would like to thank our executive MBA students. You have been exemplary members of the Booth community, both academically and socially. You have spent the past 21 months traveling from over 30 countries around the world to engage in Booth dialogue and learning. Thank you for choosing Booth and contributing to our community. Our mission at Booth is to create and disseminate fundamental knowledge of enduring impact that is widely influential and to provide a preeminent education based on that knowledge. We believe that to develop and support outstanding individuals as business leaders, it is necessary to instill in them a firm grasp of the fundamental concepts and ideas, as well as the ability to apply these concepts in a variety of real world situations. Chicago Booth was established in 1898, which makes it one of the oldest business schools in the world. We were the first business school to offer an executive MBA, which we began in 1943. We began the program in Chicago, opened a campus in Europe in 1994, first in Barcelona and now in London, and opened a campus in Asia in 2000, first in Singapore and now in Hong Kong. We are committed to this structure and, as you know, are building what will be an iconic campus for the university and for Booth in Hong Kong. I view the faculty as a core differentiating strength of the school. The faculty has two principal roles. First, the faculty creates fundamental knowledge of enduring impact. In the Chicago tradition, this means asking and answering important questions about how the world works so that we can understand it better and make better decisions, for example, as managers or policy makers. This is what Milton Friedman called positive economics. We develop theories and test those theories using data. This is our data-driven approach. If the data tells us the theory is not helpful, we adapt and try again. As you know, Raghu Rajan returned to our faculty last year after three years leading the Reserve Bank of India, a ro role he took on in part because he wanted to see whether the ideas he developed here could work in a real world setting, which I believe they did. Second, we disseminate that knowledge so that it has impact, either by delivering a superior education or by disseminating the knowledge in other ways 
such as through faculty books and speaking engagements, school publications, and other channels. Think about Amir Sufi's House of Debt, Dick Thaler's Nudge, or Nick Epley's Mindwise. All of these are faculty application and influence uh, in a significant way. The executive MBA program, including the fact that we have campuses in Europe and Asia, as well as Chicago, is a core part of this strategy, both as an integral part of the preeminent education that we offer and by ensuring that we have influence and impact throughout the world. The development of theories to explain and predict real world phenomena, the testing of those theories with data, including now big data, and using machine intensive computational methods, as well as the use of those theories to make real world decisions is part of what makes Chicago distinctive. Let me mention something else that makes the University of Chicago distinctive, and me personally proud to be part of the faculty here. Our strong and unbending commitment to academic freedom and freedom of expression. In the current socio-political environment, not just in the US but around the world, many controversial ideas about immigration, religion, race, trade, inequality and other related issues are being intensely debated, including ideas that some of us might find uncomfortable or even repugnant. There is a temptation to try and restrict the expression of such views. The University of Chicago has been known almost since its inception to strongly reject any such restrictions. As President Zimmer, Dean John Boyer of the college, and others have clearly articulated, the University of Chicago has long been known for, and I'm going to quote from the Stone Report, fundamental commitment to the principle that debate or deliberation may not be suppressed because the ideas put forth are thought by some or even most members of the university community to be offensive, unwise, immoral, or wrong-headed, close quotes. Instead, we encourage open debate and expect members of our community to vigor vigorously contest the ideas they oppose. As you graduate today, I hope you do so as proud alumni of not just the Booth School of Business, but also the University of Chicago, and you fully understand what that means. On a somewhat different note, let me convey something else that I hope you leave here with. You have good reason to be supremely confident in your own abilities to succeed. I believe you are admitted to and now graduate from the best business school in the world. Think about that. Just getting into Booth, let alone surviving and flourishing in the program, is a huge achievement. And you are among a very, very small group that had this opportunity. This should give you great confidence in your own ability to, to succeed in whatever path you should choose. Finally, I encourage you to view your graduation as the beginning rather than the end of the relationship. We want you to be lifelong partners with the school as well as with each other. You now join a community of well over 50,000 Booth alums, including a large number around the world. This community is as strong as you are willing to make it. Those who invest in the network and give back to the school, not only financially, but also through being involved in other important ways, such as hosting student events, encouraging friends and colleagues to consider our programs, considering our graduates for positions at your companies, or even sending your children to you, Chicago, find that it is an immensely rewarding experience not just in terms of financial success and career goals, but also by gaining friends, helping others, and building our community. And keep in mind that the community is broader than Booth. You are also joining a large and very influential University of Chicago alumni network. From the school side, I commit, I commit us to providing you with a rich set of opportunities to continue the relationship with us 
and in so doing, enrich your careers and lives. So let me conclude by congratulating all of you on what is a tremendous accomplishment and wishing you all the best in whatever dreams you choose to pursue, knowing that Chicago Booth community is here to support you in whatever path you choose. Congratulations and thank you. Thank you, Doug. It's now my pleasure and privilege to introduce Professor Linda E. Ginzel, who will present the graduation address. Linda was an easy choice for our faculty speaker, given her impact on today's graduates. She taught many of them a course on leadership during their very first week in the program, and Linda taught all graduates a final course on leadership capital. She has been on the Chicago Booth faculty since 1992 and specializes in negotiation skills, managerial psychology, and executive development. Her recent interest is focused on what Linda terms leadership capital, the courage, wisdom, and capacity to decide when to manage and when to lead. In 2000, President Clinton awarded her a President's Service Award, the nation's highest honor for volunteer service directed at solving critical social problems. Linda is also a two-time recipient of the James S. Kemper Jr. Grant in Business Ethics. In addition to her responsibilities at Chicago Booth, Linda is the president of Kids in Danger, a nonprofit organization dedicated to protecting children by improving children's product safety. Linda also served as the director of the Consumers Union, the nonprofit publisher of Consumer Reports. Linda is a charter member of the Association for Psychological Science, as well as a member of the Academy of Management. She received her bachelor's degree with distinction and summa cum laude in psychology from the University of Colorado in 1984. She then studied experimental social psychology at Princeton, where she earned her master's degree in 1986 and her PhD in 1989. While she was working on her Princeton PhD, she also worked as a senior consultant in training and development for Mutual of New York's Group Pensions and Operations Center. Linda has taught at the Kellogg School of Management at Northwestern University and at the Graduate School of Business at Stanford University. She's received the 2011 Faculty Excellence Award, the inaugural Global Hillel Einhorn Teaching Award for 2013, and she was named an Impact Professor by our class of 2014. Please join me in welcoming Professor Linda Genzel. Good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon to our graduates, friends, and loved ones, and especially to those of you who have traveled far across land and sea to be with us here today. Welcome to the city of Chicago, the birthplace of the skyscraper. Welcome to our great university, which is its namesake, and welcome to the Booth School of Business. It is my honor to be invited to speak on this occasion when we celebrate the accomplishments of AXP 16 from Cyberport in Hong Kong, EXP 22 based in London's Woolgate Exchange, and XP 86 right here at the Gleacher Center downtown. Our guests may not know that your class numbering system means that you are the 16th class to graduate from our program in Asia, the 22nd class to graduate from our program in Europe, and the 86th class 
to graduate from our program in Chicago. You are graduating from the University of Chicago, the very first school in all the world to create the executive MBA program. It is here in Chicago where we opened our doors to executives in 1943. In XP number one, there were 20 men and three women, all from the Chicagoland area. Today, we celebrate 208 graduates, representing 60 different countries of citizenship. Today is a great day. It's a great day for you, the graduates, and also for everyone who encouraged you, supported you, and helped you to make this day happen. Congratulations to the entire community. One more round of applause. Let's go. Those applause are for you. I know that you're all hoping, um, actually expecting, that I will say something interesting or even inspiring at this important stop on the journey that is your life. I certainly don't want to disappoint you, but all of these graduates were my students, so you know that I am not a motivational speaker. I am a teacher. I don't make a habit of addressing big crowds in fancy venues, and yet today I find myself here with all the majesty of Rockefeller Chapel in front of a thousand people. So, for the next 12 minutes or so, all of you are my students, and that includes Dean Skinner. <laughs> Welcome to my classroom. <laughs> when teaching, I always stress the importance of beginnings and endings. Commencement is both. Today is both a beginning and an ending. It is the end of your formal studies for the Master of Business Education degree, and it is the beginning of your informal studies as each of you becomes your own professor for life. When you were working hard in your classes, you were focused on the conceptual knowledge provided by your professors. You were focused on the details of the required assignments and you were focused on being a good student so that you could learn and perform well in your formal studies. But we, we professors, we were focused on another goal. We were preparing you to balance buildings on bird cages. Well, if you don't know what I mean by that, and I feel quite certain that you don't, well, let me tell you a story. In 1872, a 28-year-old apprentice draftsman named Daniel Burnham opened an architecture firm with his good friend, John Root. Burnham and Root would soon become one of the finest architectural firms in the city. Among the firm's best work is the Monadnock Building in Chicago's Loop. It's at the corner of Dearborn and Jackson. If you have time this weekend, or when you're touring Chicago, I hope that you'll see this building. There's a very good coffee shop there, a hat shop, and a great old shoe repair business. If you go to visit, pay particular attention to the walls. The walls are six feet thick, almost two meters at the base. They had to be that wide to support the weight of the building, which is 16 stories high. For thousands of years, buildings had to have thick walls because walls carried the weight of the entire structure. The higher the building, the thicker the walls. And this building represented an amazing architectural achievement. It was the tallest load-bearing building ever built, and it was the tallest office building in the world. John Root called this building his jumbo. 
but it was his last project because he died suddenly of pneumonia while it was under construction. The Monadnock building was a great achievement, but it also represented the limits of an age-old concept. It made sense that the walls had to be heavy and strong in order to hold the weight of the building, but with load-bearing walls, a building can only go so high. And as the ambitions of city planners and residents rose, so did the desires of architects and their clients to build even higher. But how could you build a really, really tall building without building really, really thick walls? Well, a man named William LeBaron Jenny came up with the answer. Jenny is widely recognized as the father of the American skyscraper. And according to Chicago lore, he had a breakthrough idea when he observed his wife placing a very heavy book on top of a tall metal bird cage. The cage not only supported the weight of the book, but Jenny could see that it could have easily supported a whole stack of books. A stack of books piled high and balancing on a bird cage. What an image. Jenny introduced the idea of a complete steel skeleton, and he built the first fully metal-framed skyscraper right here in Chicago in 1884, nine miles from where you're sitting. And just as his wife used a birdcage to support the weight of a very heavy book, Jenny used metal columns and beams to support his building from the inside. With Jenny's new framework, limits on the height of buildings changed. Walls became more like hanging curtains made of glass, and columns within the buildings bore the structure of the weight across the foundation. Buildings began rising to impressive new heights, and together with the development of plumbing, electricity, elevators, and most importantly, the elevator braking system, it's true, the sky was literally the limit. If you go to the top of Willis Tower, that's the old Sears Tower, or any other famous skyscraper on a tour of Chicago, you will see much more than an extraordinary view. You will see the power of abandoning long-held assumptions. The assumptions that walls held up a building dominated for many years and limited architects' progress. Their load-bearing assumptions quite literally served as an upper bound to the height of the buildings they could design. Jenny's vision to use metal, frame, core construction was brilliant. It represented a completely new way of thinking about the source of strength, the strength of an inner framework. The story that I've just told you is instructive. It demonstrates the combined power of shedding a default assumption that was weighing people down with making a major conceptual shift that provided architects with the strength they needed to build higher. Although you did not study building construction at Booth, I'm quite certain, I hope that this is still something that you learned. I hope your vision has shifted in a way that enables you to rise above load-bearing assumptions, whatever form those may take. Executives come to Booth with lots of experience, but also with many assumptions about management, strategy, finance, and leadership. For example, you may have come here with an assumption that the economic world is a zero-sum game, or that some people can systematically beat the market without any inside information, or that debt is a cheaper form of finance because it is less risky, or that issuing equity is bad because it dilutes earnings. You may have even come here with the assumption that people are either natural-born leaders or not. 
as opposed to the view that leadership is a choice. The members of our faculty have worked hard to help you recognize assumptions, the assumptions that may limit the heights you could reach. And you have worked hard to shed those assumptions. It is not an easy task because many of those assumptions have served you well in the past and there is risk in abandoning them. Yet, the most important thing that you received from your education at Chicago is the willingness to question your load-bearing assumptions and to make a different choice when necessary. Now, there is a second thing that's important for you to notice about skyscrapers. In the classroom, we speak often about frameworks that allow us to think more complexly about business issues across industries, economies, and geographies. When I teach leadership, I emphasize building our own personal frameworks. When we create our own structures and reduce our reliance on externally provided ones, we increase our ability to handle ambiguity. Creating our own frameworks can help us to be wiser, younger. To learn more from our everyday experience and what we learn can better inform our choices, frameworks can help each of us to create a better future. Just like a skyscraper's strength comes from its core, the clarity, vision, and support for your own framework must come from your core. Your classroom now is the world outside these hallowed halls. There is no blueprint for your future. In architecture, structural integrity is established during the planning phase and built into the foundation. William LeBaron Jenny taught us to build up by building from within. Leaving here, you will need that same kind of structural integrity. Build from within. Build your frame with strong values. Build with unselfishness, with kindness, with curiosity. Build with open-mindedness to new ideas, with compassion, with a sense of fairness. Your own inner framework will determine how high you can go. Wherever your adventures take you, remember, there is always a way to do more, to do better, and reach for the sky. When in Hong Kong, look to the 108 floors of the International Commerce Center for inspiration. In London, to the 73 floors of the Shard. And right here in Chicago, near the 108 floors of the Willis Tower, you can always look to the windows in the sky and remember your Chicago Booth education. As you leave here today, I hope you will continue to rise above your load-bearing assumptions and keep building a strong inner framework to ensure the integrity of all that you do. It has been my great honor to be your teacher. Thank you.
before this congregation of scholars, family, friends, and colleagues, I will now present to Dean Skinner the degree recipients of the Master of Business Administration from the University of Chicago Booth School of Business. We ask that you please hold your applause until after all of the diplomas have been awarded. Skinner, these students have completed the degree, the program of professional studies prescribed by the faculty of the University of Chicago Booth School of Business. The global class of 2017 leaves our school stronger for their commitment to the program, to each other, and to the future of Chicago Booth. We are confident in their ability to go forward and continue to pursue the highest aspirations of their fields. It is with great pleasure and enormous pride that I present these leaders as recipients of the degree of Master of Business Administration. Associate Deans Patty Keegan and Richard Johnson and Managing Director Intan Chen will be reading the names of our graduates. Those not in attendance today will receive their degrees in absentia. By virtue of the authority delegated to me, I confer upon you the degree of Master of Business Administration, and I express the hope that your work will further wise choices in the allocation of economic resources for the benefit of all people. Shihan Chamila Abeguna Vardana. Shamil Afanziev. Anna Alexandrova. Sharon Elizabeth Alexander. Sharir Allen. Bashar M. Attar. Doris Ayong. Ashley Travis Bancroft. Christian Bost. Charles Dudley Bain III. Andre Beletsev. Shiv Rutan Barty. Corina Mahalia Blidar. Tim Florian Bodhi. Christina Bogatsky. Dana E. Bolton. Dustin James Brownrider. John Ignatius Brebeck. Aliyu Mobalaji Brima. Drew McGregor Burns. Mark David Butts. Mark Allen Canizares. Anthony R. Kappel. Michael Sebo.
Wei Kin Chan. Robindra Narayan Chatterjee. Yichang Chen. Gi Chuan Chu. Hung Kam Iris Choi. Caroline Margaret Colasaco. Xavier Jean-Francois Coquel. Michael Rashad Dames. Abdullah Dango. Mevio Difidarico. Sedina Ita Henry Diop. Damien Dolniuk. Monica Marguerite Dreyer Staub. Mustafa Durrani. Michael Joseph Eisengay. Alina Inez Espinoza. Garrett Timothy Fitzgerald. Brandon Christopher Fox. Vladimir Gapanko. Anna Carolina Garcia. Stefan Francesco Guess. James Michael Giuliani. Christopher Gleason. Christian Goals. Sergei Goryachev. Jeffrey Escobar Gutierrez. Jacob David Hartman. Todd Allen Hellman. Sandilia Hota. Jing Huang. Taeyong Huang. Farid Elishkin. Natasha Indras. Deseyuki Ishihara. Mayonk Jane. Charlie Jaganathan. Kayuk Chung. Benjamin David Johnson. Jean Christopher Jones. Charles Evan Kalbacher. Robert H. Kaplan. Sean Koplowski.
Naho Katsura. David Allen Kite. Anna Klasser. Brad Kasef. Dmitry Kurnov. Vanchikal Joseph Korean. Romeo LaGuardia Jr. Roman Lelyakov. Gisana Lewis. Xian Li. Celeste Marie Valencia Lim. Chao Lin. Wei Che Liu. Tracy Lowe. Wei Lu. Michael Luce. Oleg Lupashko. Kin Ma. Hare Krishna Madana Raj. Pedro Madera. Ravi Mahendrakar. Frederic Mayu. Olga Malinova. Emin Mamadov. Projecta Sham Manyar. <laughs> Vardan Markosian. John Michael Mazarakis. Cynthia Marie McGee. Punit Meta. Rupa Meta. Jonathan Claire Minor. Tofik Mir. David Modol Flix. Zaya Turamon. Leonid Morozovsky. Nitin Ramchan Motwani. Abdukarim Mulim. Abigail Marie Moyer. Mache P. Moros. Michael Raymond Murphy. Toon Teng Huing. Suresh Nistala. Antonio Miguel Olivo.
Ilanit Liliana Oshri. Aitek Oto. Adama Watara. Fulmi Olomalem. Tushar Pandey. Vikrant Pandey. Nino Papava. Rahman Parthasarati. Vitya Pathasarati. Deepen Patel. Chaka M. Patterson. Mata Palowska <coughs> Peng Li Diego Pirani Cynthia Nomsa Pongweni Bradford William Powell Gian Prakash Giaur Rahman Aaron Arkady Reistein Karti Raja Gopalan Ganesh Releka Narayan I skip Narayan. <laughs> Narayan Raganadan. Sorry. <laughs> Chester Benton Rodi Heaver. Skylar Andrew Raw. Randall Rommel Sanjay Roy Naween Kumar Sampath Rajesh Chandra Cha Santosh Benjamin John Shek Maria Scott Emiko Seal Abhishek Sent Jo 
Jill Sarah Arnold. Ruslan Sibaev. Philip Zigward. Manisha Singh. Mikhail Sklyarov. Robert Victor Sloan. Anthony Tyrone Smith. Lika Sofiar. Janet Song Pi In. Richard George Stephenson. Kanan Sugantaraman. Yasuyuki Tanaka. Matthew Paul Taylor. Jung Hyun Cha. Pradeep Taki. Min Ta Jo. Christine Thomas. Katrine S. Thurston. Claudius Chang C. Y. Ekaterina Sukanova. Josiah David Tubbs. What's love, Wakta? Sylvia Angela Wan Lovren. Anton Winsky. John David Wallace. Nelson Wong Ngat. Joy G. Wyckoff. Lisa Xia. Xiang Feng. Xu Gongmei. Sunny Yang. Patrick Yip. Brian Yoon Jae Hoon. Michael Peter Jelanich. Zhang Wen Hui.
Zhao Ziqi. Zhu Ming. Borjan Zumabek. Whitney Drayton Zimmerman. Li Jinglu. This is a special day for all of you upon whom I have just conferred a degree. And it is a very special day for the family members and friends who may be here to join you. It marks the completion of your MBA studies, a path, a path that I trust has been challenging. I hope you are enjoying this moment of celebration and perhaps a moment of reflection that this day affords. You are now all graduates of the University of Chicago. Congratulations. Because of your achievements that we celebrate here today with your family and friends, each of you will always be connected to the University of Chicago, a connection that I hope you and we will foster for many years. And so, to all degree recipients, please accept my congratulations for all you have achieved. I wish you all good fortune and happiness in the years ahead. Enjoy your coming adventures wherever they may lead you.
Following our recessional, please join your classmates, family, friends, faculty, and staff at a reception across the street at the Harper Center. And I have one final announcement to make regarding a special arrangement of carillon music that will be played in honor of our graduates and of our speaker today, Linda Ginzel. The music will be played starting at 5 p.m. and can be heard right outside of Rockefeller Chapel. Thank you. This now concludes our graduation ceremony.